Florida. It's the Cube covering Sapphire Now. Headline sponsored by SAP HANA Cloud, the leader in platform as a service, with support from Console Inc., the cloud internet company. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live at SAP Sapphire. This is the Cube. SiliconANGLE's flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Peter Burris. Our next guest is Dave Mason, SVP, Big Data and SAP at NetApp, and Chuck Goringer, Cisco Global Partner Organization. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much for having so, us. So, um, NetApp in the file business, this file storage, disk, disk flash, uh, flash has taken over the enterprise. Certainly it's powering Everywhere. a lot of the stuff under the hood. Everywhere. And the success of FlexPod, just, you've got a lot of big accounts like SAP. HANA and Cloud on-prem is exploding here in performance numbers. What's going on under the hood for you guys? How are you guys involved in the SAP equation? How does all this connect? So, so let me start, Chuck, let me kick off just for a second. Yeah, let me take it. So we've had a long-standing relationship with, with Cisco. I mean, over five years in developing our FlexPod solution, which is a converged infrastructure solution. It's been an amazing Ride. We've built a multi-billion dollar business out of that, and it's been you know, a keystone to a number of customers in developing their business practices around it. We're actually, we just, uh, we just released the latest version of that with Flash, enabling an all-flash solution, uh, or all-flash FAS in there, and that has grown so fast. In fact, it's the fastest growing product one of our fastest growing products at NetApp, we've seen the history of the company. It's 22 flash years. the crack of storage? Flash I mean, is not, are, flash is a crack of storage. It's going crazy. You get people stuck on that, they never go anywhere else. In fact, what's going on in the industry is the reason it's not the media, and people keep saying it's the media, right? I mean, media it's not cost. the media, it's the experience. Because right now, flash is changing so fast on the size, the capacity, where that used to be the last frontier. You used to see that, you know, you could never get more than a, maybe a, a terabyte of uh, flash and it cost a fortune to do that. Prices have dropped through the floor. Capacity has gone up through the roof. We're releasing a 16 terabyte um, drive in one month on all flash that'll be incorporated into our all flash array that's going to be part of the, the FlexPod ecosystem. That enables people to do so much more. And as I said, it's more experience than it is media. Because once you get people, as you said, to get them stuck on it, they never go back. What they do is they put all their workloads onto it. It simplifies their environment. And the reason they do this is because we're seeing people get away from tiered architecture and going to a performance tier for persistent storage and a capacity tier. And that simplifies object their storage has been booming on capacity, right? Absolutely, and object storage is where we see it, or an S3 Connect, either one's going to go that way. Well, as digital and software and analytics get more deeply embedded within the business and becomes an increasingly crucial asset to how any business behaves in, in its marketplaces, then the physical constraints of capturing, moving data become very real, and they're starting to become part and parcel of the whole concept of business design, business model design. How are leaders starting to think differently about designing their business or their business models as it pertains to this notion of data availability anywhere, move quickly, over distances that satisfy experience requirements. Uh, I'll let Chuck take the first one, I'll take the second one, how does that? Absolutely, um, well first of all, I, I, as, uh, as we kind of talked about, the partnership between Cisco and NetApp is, is actually very, very important to uh, Cisco in general because of our multi-billion dollar business, but it's really important to our SAP strategy. Um, NetApp and Cisco today have been innovating around total cost of ownership of deploying SAP applications. And to your question about the digital enterprise, as these applications start to bring data in from different sources, you're trying to take advantage and, and deliver new business outcomes uh, through the applications, through bringing data in from that management and that total cost of ownership is crucial. And we started uh, down a journey many, many years ago with using the FlexPod as the basis. And what we've done is we've been innovating together with SAP around how to bring that total cost of ownership uh, lower and so that you can bring these new business scenarios. And one of them is around um, how do we share in HANA? How do we do things like tailored data center integration? How can we share more resources? How can we take better advantage of the infrastructure to deliver those outcomes? It used to be yeah. very dogmatic back even just five years ago, but go back 10 years for 
you know, real, you know, people putting their heels in, into, into the ground and digging in around architectures. Scale out, scale up, or two different, you know, notions, almost two, two political spectrums, right? It's like Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I, I don't know if it's a bad <laughs> example, but, would, yeah. you know. <laughs> that might actually one be wants to build a wall, it's called a firewall, that's Cisco <laughs> business. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but I mean, you now have scale up, scale out, now are completely indiscriminate. No one is independent yeah. of each other. Yeah. It depends on the workload, right? So, you know, UCS has been, we've covered some of the UCS stuff with Cisco. So, you know, in and of itself, storage has their own challenges with, with um, you know, high performance and certain workloads just on the storage side. You, you mentioned tiering. When you start to get into stuff where optimization and automation comes in, now we're kind of in the Cisco, so I'm trying to piece this together here. And if I get that right, that's kind of where I see the action here. So, can you guys share um, where the complexity gets abstracted away. What are you guys doing with FlexPod specifically and with Cisco, say UCS or other tools so that the customers don't have to go through all the hassles? Because again, the simplicity angle is huge, right? How do you make it simple as what everyone wants? But you got to automate in order to get there. What's being automated? How does that affect the customer? What are some of the things? Chuck, you Can you put some color around that? Yeah, I mean, going back to the total cost ownership story, and like you said, how do you enable these? Um, so there's a couple of funding principles. The first one is, is um, you know, we want to get better asset utilization. So that's through you know, virtual servers, that's through uh, shared resources, um, and optimizing all the tiers, whether it's network storage or, or, or compute. Um, the second piece is, is we've been working with SAP not just to automate the infrastructure, but also, to automate the requirements of the application, specifically things like SAP HANA, and now as we're going into big data solutions, SAP HANA Vora. We've created uh, co-innovation labs. We're working very closely in very tight partnership with SAP, together with NetApp, and you know, the three of us are coming together to have that end-to-end, -end, starting at the application requirements, and then with a single click, being able to deploy those applications, configure the infrastructure seamlessly, and then by using automation, we bring another element, which is what we call security and governance. So by not having a manual, uh, you know, re reducing manual processes and all that, we have an, a service assurance, we know how things are deployed, we have an auditable result at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's been a founding principle of our work on FlexPod. Absolutely, Flexpod. absolutely. FlexPod was, was all about simplicity from the ground up. I love Bill McDermott's keynote this morning, talking about lending on simplicity, and the focus on simplicity, and the whole deal with make it consumable for the end customer to use. And that's really what we've been talking about. And that's what our relationship is. And by the way, the relationship for SAP, I look at this as kind of the perfect marriage, so to speak. Well, maybe a three-way marriage. But a perfect marriage, you know, I don't, I don't go that far, but I'm just saying <laughs> that we have got a incredible relationship with SAP over 12 years. We've been doing work business with SAP, five or six years with Cisco. It's kind of like the, the Russell Westbrook and the, and the Steph Curry of the industry joining together and, and we are just so proud of that relationship. Yeah, and, and you know, and the, and the Gold State Warriors, you mentioned them, the offense, you know, <laughs> uh, Steph Curry's the MVP and well, LeBron is going, going at it with them, but you look at, that's a team chemistry and their approach is different. They're throwing a lot of three-pointers. Yep, yep. So you, you have a new game. So yep. I'd say cloud is kind of the new game now and you're seeing that. Cloud is the three-pointer of the, uh, of the, the new, IT it's industry. It's the new high-arc yeah. three-pointer. Yeah. But back to the business model question that Peter brought up on the storage, and now he talked, I was teasing it out earlier, the apps themselves are the business model, right? So yeah. what you have yeah. is, it's easy to say, oh, Facebook's one big app, okay, that's their business model, make billions. But enterprises, as they connect, and, and SAP is integrating with a lot of touch points. You guys obviously are two big companies, they're a big company, we had IBM on earlier. If all these things, they're integrating well. So that requires mixed workloads. So this is the big question. So how do you guys deal with the diversity of workloads? Are they, and how do you deal with that? Is that built into the system? Because that's an issue right now for the enterprise. It's not as easy as saying, hey, it's a clean sheet piece of paper. There's multiple apps, different workloads, different times, real time. What's your take on this mixed workload so, so I, think, I think the way I see it from a number of customer meetings that I've had is, is everybody is struggling with with how to lower their overall cost of operation. I mean, that's kind of the net of it, right? And so they look at every opportunity they have and they look at, the, at their toolbox. They say, well, what am I going to put on-prem? What am I going to put off-prem? What am I going to keep internal? And what am I going to give off to a third-party solution? So, and what we see is many customers, in fact, almost all customers, are using some sort of hybrid solution, that hybrid cloud opportunity, where it says, I'm going to have some element of my workload in the cloud, 
with, through an S3 connection or into Amazon or into Azure, you know, whatever it is, or I'm going to have, and I'm going to have some element of that on-prem, okay? We believe that's the architecture of most companies. And in fact, I think that's where we see our value because the value benefit- That's the hybrid cloud, basically. That's the hybrid cloud. And the value benefit of the hybrid cloud with Cisco and, and NetApp is that, that ONTAP was built for a, that type of uh, ability to go back between clouds. It's agnostic to clouds. It doesn't matter if you're in Azure today, in Amazon tomorrow, the ability to snap back and forth and then bring it back in if you need to deal with the workload change, okay? And that's where we see most customers moving to. Chuck, what's your take on the relationship with NetApp? Because obviously Cisco's evolving as well. Everyone's retooling for digital transformation, uh, whatever trend they want to call it, but it's the same trend. That people are digitizing their business, dynamic, perimeterless security. Um, you got hyper-converged out there. Obviously you guys know a lot about converged infrastructure between you know, Cisco and, and FlexPod. Uh, you guys are in that business. Yep. You got hyper-converged, <laughs> you got real-time apps, Talk about the state of the relationship with NetApp. What's the future look like? Um, a lot of people have been talking about it. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, right now our relationship with, with NetApp is, is basically one of our most strategic relationships. And when it comes to SAP, um, it's, it's really foundational. We're doing all our co-innovation with SAP with NetApp. Um, we've built out labs at SAP with NetApp. And the reason for that is, is at the end of the day, um, these are mission critical systems. We're, you know, Cisco's strategy is to work with best of breed partners like NetApp to make sure that you have the security, reliability, and also the innovation engine to, to deliver these applications. So right now, our, you know, we're, we're doing a lot with SA, uh, around SAP together, and you know, I don't see that changing in the first. SAP is very much co-development oriented, aren't they? Pretty Absolutely. Much. They're yeah. from for a long time. From, from day one, they've been, and and that's why I can't find a better partner than Cisco and going working with SAP and enabling SAP. We're the core of, of the HANA cloud, the HANA enterprise cloud. Okay. We absolutely are that core. And for, uh, in fact, I met a couple of the uh, EVPs over at, in charge of this, build, yeah. of this business. They are, they are saying, Dave, our resiliency is critical and our ability to deliver our customers' needs in HANA are the number one thing we have as a priority within across SAP. Where's, where does the customer's challenges from you guys' standpoint? And obviously, the market's changing. I mean, Internetworking was created by TCP IP that basically created Cisco. But now with cloud, is there an inter-clouding technology that's similar to what routers were? Because again, we mentioned perimeter-based security is now a factor, you get security. Now you get cloud traversal, you got HANA, you got Bluemix at IBM, you got- Are we going to see know, cloud bridging or is this whole thing going to get flattened down so there's a common <laughs> protocol for <laughs> dealing with cloud? <laughs> I'll give you my point of view, and it may uh, be wrong. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's okay. futuristic, so we want to kind of tease it I out. I think the reason that cloud, uh, cloud bridging, as you say it, is going to happen, because competitive natures are going to stay in place. The competitive environment is going to push for that. And so the ability to go between clouds, or ability to go in a cloud, I was actually talking to a customer about a month ago. They actually have their dev test, their test dev into one cloud, and they have their, they have their archival data in another cloud and they want to move back and forth between those two clouds. And that ability to flex back and forth as changes in pricing goes up, especially as you have um, demand pricing now, it's so critical. I, I was going to just add that the pace of change and what we're seeing right now uh, doesn't lend itself to a, a flattening. That's when you see yeah. technology slow down and things, you know, normalize. I think there's so much change out there. We call it the world of many clouds, you know, yeah. and, and we're seeing that. But one thing I, I, I do want to call out is, um, We've seen a change over the last you know, couple months of our business where SAP, uh, where SAP workloads now, it used to be, well, maybe cloud, you know, a, a percentage now. We're seeing now almost all customers are like, how do I leverage the cloud, obviously, for SAP specifically? That means they're motion, in mission critical workloads, and that's where you, know, you have to think about what kind of infrastructure you run in the cloud. Does it have the security, the controls, the innovation that companies like Cisco and NetApp are driving. Yeah, and, and it's, it's got compliance, you've got integration, yep, yep. there's automation, you have it's not trivial. You have disaster recovery, you have all the aspects that are needed in the cloud that you're used to from an on-prem solution. Yeah, and Absolutely. still data data's growing too, so if you're in the storage business, you know, just 
I don't think it's going to be a depression when it comes to storage. There's more storage is needed. <laughs> more and more capacity optimization is huge. Well, you know, we keep storing everything. Do you ever throw anything away? No. <laughs> I keep upgrading. Exactly and, yeah, people build on top. This, this is a you know evolution of layers of innovation. It is. It's not, it I don't really see is. it destruction. I think more yeah. you know in advancement there. Absolutely agree. Well, guys, thanks for coming on the cube. Uh, Chuck, Dave, appreciate it. Welcome to to being a cube alumni. Um, on theCUBE, really appreciate it, and yeah. thanks for the candid insight. Cisco and NetApp here inside theCUBE at Sapphire. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. You're watching theCUBE. Thank you very much. There'll be millions of people in the near future that are, want to be involved in their own personal well-being and in wellness.